Hello, happy Friday everyone. I hope everyone had a wonderful week and that their Friday is going to lead into a great weekend as well. So, if you don't know, I am Jaybird the Word and I run Play Game Spread Joy. Here on Fridays, we do a chat hangout and I unbox a game or two that is a new to me board game. Adjust that volume a little bit. The music. There we go. So, if you're in chat, let me know how your week was. Tell me how what all you did if you played anything new, different, unique. Uh, this week has been a bit busy, but in a good way. Uh, beginning of the week on Monday, I streamed and played Legendary, a James Bond deck building game, 007, for the first time, and won. So, y'all got to help me play, kind of gave me some tips and tricks along the way, and I faced off against Goldfinger. So that was really fun to play since I've only really played the Legendary Marvel series before seeing how the 007 game set up against the actual kind of like the movies books and you progress through it um, and like they kind of had A, B, and C sets of the deck that stack together so to make sure you're going through it progressing in order or relative order from the movie with only a few things that could get out of place but you weren't like solving the mystery before you even met him or anything like that. So it was really interesting how it integrated a lot of James Bond equipment and the villains from his stuff and how you had to complete different missions as opposed to just villains. So I really enjoyed playing that. See, Tuesday night I got to start playing in the D&D 5e Daubers the Quest for the Key campaign that I'm playing over on the Charity Board Gamers stream. We play on Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Wednesday night, unfortunately, I did not get to have my game group, but instead I got to relax, kind of catch up on a few things, do some more video editing, more recording of the preview I'm working on, Last night, got to hang out with Charity Board Gamer again as his co-host. We actually played two different games. We did Match 5, and then we also celebrated uh, Susie Dancer's birthday. Uh, she joined us, and we played Umbravia from Pandasaurus Games. And even though I didn't win either game, both games, I beat Chris, which is always the plan when playing and co-hosting with Chris. Now, so this weekend, I don't have a huge amount going on, more just the video editing and trying to wrap up the preview I'm, I've been working on. But it'll be good. I've, I've had a, probably the past month I've been super busy, almost no days off per se. Like, I know tomorrow is probably the first day I don't have plans or specific plans to play a game of some sort, or game night, or whatever you may want to call it game related, for probably th three or four weeks. I've, I've planned basically a game or game night or testing, play testing something for almost every day of the week for several weeks going now, and it's nice to rest, especially since I have multiple things coming up in the future. I'm going to be Joining another streamer, uh, ironing out the details, so I don't want to give away too much yet, but I get to join another streamer, and on a Wednesday night stream, I will be safely traveling. I've been working on getting my COVID shot. Uh, I have to get the second one, but then after that, we're doing a very small bubble game gathering at a, I believe we're running 
a house in Florida right on the beach so we can go outside on the beach or just come inside and play games. It's going to be over Memorial Day weekend. Multiple games to be had. We're going to design games, play games, just hang out like five of us. Um, but yeah, that'll be the first time I've, I'll fly there. So that'll be the first time I'll have flown since December of 2019. It was the last time I flew anywhere. So it's going to be an interesting experience, to say the least. Just that travel aspect of it, because I've been driving anywhere that I want to visit lately. And then, of, of course, we got more charity streams coming up next weekend. I won't be doing this Unboxing the Week stream, because I'll be driving to West Virginia to actually co-host live with the charity board gamer on, on the Saturday to do like a big just 12-hour marathon stream of hanging out together, the two of us, showing off games, learning new games. That one is not a charity stream, but it's just to kind of hang out, have fun, show off games, hang out with chat. But then we have, coming up in June, we have a charity stream that's going to be like a 24-hour, two-day thing. Where I believe we're, it's for a charity that supports a lot of cancer research, and especially for young adults, teens, and kids that need help. I'd have to look up the name of it, so I'd, I'm not sure yet, but that's coming into planning right now. And whenever we do those, we always end up get, doing giveaways. Almost every every game we play, we get to give away a game as well. So I know last time we had well more than a dozen things to give away. It was probably 20 plus, but I don't know the exact number because we just kept giving away. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what's been going on, what's coming up, and... I've actually eaten my dinner right now, hanging out with y'all. But yeah, in a minute we'll open up a brand new game. And it's the Love Meeples. Hello. So what are we unboxing today? Well, I was waiting. I guess I could say I was waiting on you, because uh, you're the first one to speak up. But you get to help me pick what we're going to unbox. So I'm going to show you selections. So here's what I posted on we have to select from this week. Because so, every week I do kind of rotate the options. So you don't just see the same ones until we open them all. So we have uh, Runica, uh, the Six-Sided Spellbooks, Karuba, Jurassic Park Danger, Everdale Pearl Book Expansion, and then Spirit Island. So everyone in chat gets to help me decide what they want to see me open. So if you have a preference, let me know. More than happy. Probably be just a moment because I'm actually in the middle of eating dinner while I hang out with you here. And how was your week? Did you play any new games, open anything new, learn anything, or just play an old favorite? What did you do this week? Vote Jurassic Park. Okay. I have nothing against that. I've played that once. Um, what was that? Around the last Thanksgiving, I got to play it with someone. But I did not get to see all the components in it, because it was their copy. But I did. I was able to pick it up on sale, so I... Oh, yep, dinner. Well, it's okay. As long as you can hang out however long it is, it's still appreciated and still a joy to have you here. So I appreciate you stopping in, even if it's for a minute or an hour, however long you get to be here. So thank you for for being here. Learned Meeple Land and Star Realms this week. I'm not sure I know much about Meeple Land, but Star Realms, I, I played a little bit several years back. Uh, yeah, Nice and quick and straightforward two-player game. That deck-building style, if I remember correctly. But yeah, you're basically trying to get the opponent, get their, I guess, life down to zero first. I haven't played as many two-player games lately because I live alone. and It's either big game groups, online gaming and stuff. So it's either that solo or you skip up to more players than just two. But yeah, definitely a, an interesting game to try out. It's it, it does well at at least f for players newer to that play style to get into it. Um, 
But, of course, if you have one player that's really good at the game and one that has never played it, you can have a slight imbalance. But it, it's really easy to learn, and I did enjoy it when I did play. But yeah, since no one else is here saying, let's open something different, I'm going to do Danger Jurassic Park. And as I move these games, you get to see my brand new, or one of my brand new, gaming mats that I recently ordered and received in the mail this week. So I got my, my, well, my slogan, which kind of has my logo in the middle of it, right on the mat. Uh, I got like a white background, gray background, and then kind of like you see uh, around the screen, I have the black and white gaming, like board games in the background behind this. Yeah, I thought it'd be really fun to, sh to show these off. Definitely great quality. Picked them up from Inked Gaming. Very affor affordable too. I picked up five different ones, all custom, with shipping was well under $200. So definitely recommend looking into them if you ever want to get some custom game mats. But yeah, so yeah, we'll open Jurassic Park Danger Adventure strategy game. Oh, you almost can't even read it because of the claw marks. Uh, you know what? Let me get the website and I can actually post the link for you. There we go. Here's a link to that. So the, yeah, they do a lot of custom mats. Some are kind of considered um, play mats. Some are considered mouse pads. So really look at the detail of which one you're ordering because some sizes don't come with sti stitched edging. Some do. But the one the one that fits my size table, it's like two by four. Stitch ed edging, uh, really like three millimeter thick neoprene. And then the, some real, like three by three ones I got didn't have stitched, but they're a little bit thinner too, so a little bit easier to, to travel with as well. So there's a good balance to what you can find. I need to, okay, so this game, of course, has the stickers, which pros and cons to stickers versus the plastic wrap. I never try to pull the stickers off. I've always had trouble with it, so I just cut my stickers. So have you ever played this Jurassic Park game or were you just interested to see it because you love Jurassic Park and dinosaurs in general? Let me know because I am going to take up another bite. Okay, so Jurassic Park Danger Adventure Strategy Game. It says it's for two to five players, ages 10 and up, from Ravensburger. Hard to miss that. Yeah, exactly. Who doesn't like dinosaurs? Now, from my experience playing this, this is basically a one versus many type game. Where, okay, so there's a lot of tiles so it does you have the map tiles in there i'm gonna set that aside let's look at those map tiles first so one person basically plays as the dinosaurs and then however many other players you have they play as the different characters from jurassic park and i believe on depending on player count or it may just be random all of these hexagonal tiles are set up within the border of, let's see if I can do this without looking it up. Oh yeah, so if you can see on here, it actually is 
numerically set so you can see which ones connect where. Like you have B and B. C's over here. You have D out here. E and A. So there's the, the island. Kind of like Raptor. Um, possibly. I have not played Raptor, so I'm unsure about that. But that might be correct. So a lot of these on the back say what type of tile they are. Say they're the center of the board, their start tile, their perimeter tiles. So it may be that you take the stack of each type to and then from there shuffle and randomize. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. So we can see what it might end up looking like. Is that when it's this easy to to pull out of the box, we might as well set up while we have time. Okay, well, that does show it's a bit of a tight fit on some of the tiles, which some people like. Some people prefer it really loose. They do fit, though. And it doesn't really help. I do have... Under this playmat, I had a puzzle set up, so it's a little lumpy. So that may be messing with how these sit into here. So we got center ones, which it looks like your start's going to go right here in the middle every time. And then we random. They do the center ones. Now the artwork is kind of fun in that it, sh it has like little details of different dinosaurs on different tiles. Hello James, how are you today? I hope you had a wonderful week. I'm glad you're able to be here. We are currently unboxing... Where did I put the top to this? Ah, always falls on the floor. Da uh, Jurassic Park Danger Adventure Strategy Game. This is something I played last fall. Uh, someone else's copy and I decided to get my own copy so interested to actually look through all the different components so we did a quick setup of the tiles that came in the bag did you play anything new this week James any old favorites how was your week so this interesting enough this punch board single punch board is wrapped in plastic which seems odd considering that the box itself was not wrapped in plastic. Busy week. You got your second shot today, so you're excited to get that done. That is wonderful. Yeah, I got my first shot last Friday. So in about two more weeks, actually on a Saturday, I'll be getting my second one. What I, from everything I've heard, it is typically the second shot that can make you feel a little bit more down or worse of the two. Um, so I planned it, so, and it's like the day after the second one that could be the worst day. So I planned it for the weekend so I can have the weekend to rest once I get the shot. Uh, but you played Llama with friends after dinner we had yesterday. Well, that's wonderful. Uh... I believe you're talking about this game. <laughs> I just happened to have it on my desk over here. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, that's definitely a fun, quick card game. <laughs> uh, so this punch board for Jurassic Park seems to punch really nicely. Nice and clean. So... That's probably why they had it wrapped in plastic, because these are almost falling out. How is Llama? Uh, 
it is very easy to learn. It's basically you're trying to play cards kind of a se sequential order from your hand to get rid of your, your hand. If you're stuck with extra cards, you get points. It's one of those games you don't want to be the one to get the most points because if you get to a certain point level first, you lose. Oh, you gave them the copy. That's always great. Yeah, I, I like to try to give away games and spread the joy of gaming as I'm able. Um, Y'all might already know, but let's see, what was it? Two weeks ago, I opened Paladins of the West Kingdom here on Twitch. And because of that, and I had an extra copy, I'm actually giving away a brand new copy in Shrink on my YouTube right now. And I'll be, that closes on Sunday. So, if you don't have the game and you want to get want it, go enter my giveaway on YouTube. So yeah, so a lot of small small chits. They did punch very nicely. Okay, so we got a rule book. I don't know, that first page almost feels bland compared to the artwork we've already pulled out. But says so stop, watch the how to play video. See, there's pros and cons to that if it tells you stop and watch the how to play. I like to read and I like to watch, but if it says you have to watch something, that could throw some people off. Yeah, and Llama plays in quick rounds, low points wins, but if you go out, you can get rid of your own chips, being a 10 point swing. Yeah, it's definitely helpful to kind of get rid of all your cards to get rid of chips, be first. So, yeah, pretty straightforward. Talks about the setup, which we were able to figure out on our own, which is really cool in this. Um, yeah, so this is a one versus many because you have the dinosaur set up and then you have humans. And then, so you're going to start, choose a starting character or choose randomly. Uh, there's rules for two player game setups. Goes over the how to the win, activate. Um, the coloration is pretty easy to read, kind of nice that that goes between the green and the red to know that if you're talking about dinosaurs or humans and how you win. Talks about movement and how you attack each other. Um, so in a way it's if you've played unmatched and that you're trying to take the other player out. But this has a little bit more strategy in that you have tasks you're trying to complete at the same time. Depending on which side you're on, if you're a dinosaur or a human. Yeah, so a pretty decent rule book. Um, I know when I read it before, it's pretty easy to find answers to questions. Nice little tips on the back. Let's see what else we got in here. Okay, so we got the human meeples. Quite like the recent Prospero Hall games I've tried. Horrified is one of my favorite solo or co op games. Yeah, so I actually played Horrified it was probably a couple of months back at, at a game night with a friend that. Uh, it's actually Chelsea who's on with charity board game with us a lot. She, We found out she lives like less than 30 minutes from me. So we started having game nights. Yeah, we tried uh, Horrified. We completely read the rules wrong and messed up so bad. We played like three times in a row. We kept finding out, oh, we got that rule wrong, or that rule wrong, which made it harder on ourselves. So, but I decided I, I wanted to try again and play solo. So I picked up the game by myself, but I need to unbox it. So that's probably going to be one of the next choices um, to kind of show off unboxed on stream. But yeah, once I unbox it, I'll probably even try to play it solo on a Monday stream. And whoever joins me in chat here can kind of help me select the moves I'll be making and can kind of follow along as well. Uh, what else has Prospero Hall come out late, come out with lately? I don't follow them as closely, but I'm sure if you start telling me names, I would know them. Yeah, so we got all of these human colored player meeples. Um, and these actually correspond to all the player boards or player cards, however you want to call them, because it's 
it's card material, but they're board size. So say you're playing as Alan Grant, you use the orange one. Because if, if you actually die in this game, you come back playing as a different character. So you're not out of the game. But yeah, so we have all the well-known characters from the movies. And they have different goals. And of course, you get one of their quotes on there. So, if you're a huge, if you're a big fan of the original Jurassic Park movie, this is going to be right up your alley. And then we have the dinosaur board, which plays a little bit differently. And we do have some dinosaur meeples. Jaws, Wonder Woman, Horrified, Jurassic Park, and Back to the Future. So a lot of the ones that are IPs of different movies, it seems. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think I picked. I may have picked up Wonder Woman. If not, I was looking into it. Um, Back to the Future. I've heard good things about. I've not tried Jaws yet, um, but definitely interested in some of those. My worry is some games that do that are IP based. Yep, IP games for Target and Big Box. Yeah, because they're trying to bridge between kind of mainstream and hobby gamers, which sometimes works, sometimes are not, I guess, as... What's the best way to put it? Hobbified in that they're, some of the mechanics are oversimplified. And when you when you get used to the... The harder games you're like okay why am i playing that but not saying that they're bad games just it's what the type of games we're used to playing and enjoying a lot of times kind of like when we look back as hobby gamers now we may look at monopoly which is, has become very controversial and that is that a good game well for mainstream people a lot of them consider it good a lot of us in the hobby don't care for it anymore but not it doesn't say that it didn't doesn't have its place so yeah definitely when it comes to ip games i try to do more research on them to understand the mechanics behind it and if it's something i'd enjoy beyond just the art ip part of it but i did get a chance to play this before so i knew for sure i enjoyed how they set up dress this jurassic park game and we got one simple die it's a black die with red pips let me get it out of the bag which works really well for the dino player and we have a pack of cards and this has a quick see if i can grab it should have a quick release tab It's always nice when those tabs work well. And this isn't one exact deck. It's actually each different character has a deck of cards. So like some cards might have you be able to run. Uh, they can climb because on the map there's basically mounds or the edge of walls for the different enclosures. So you can climb out of enclosures. So you agree uh, that these are better version for a lot of mass market people. A good way to... Yeah, they're definitely a good bridge between the older mass market games and current type games that have more to them. I would agree on that for sure. They're, they're great as gateway games. Absorbed by Funko and makes all the Funkoverse games too. Okay. So I've, I actually have a couple of the Funko games more because I wanted the little minifigures. And so I still need to actually play the Funkoverse games. But I, I did keep the figures with the games. It's not like I just took the figure out and put it on a shelf. It's I, I, I just need to try the game now. Um, but yeah, so e each of these characters actually has a slightly different deck set up and what their abilities to do. So that is really fun. So like some characters are better at running, some are climbers, some 
can actually distract dinosaurs to try to take damage because like just like in the movie they're designed to die so yeah we got all these decks for the different characters and let's get to the dino deck so before I did not get to play as the dino so I did not get to look at the dinosaur cards so that's going to be one of the key things I have not seen yet There we go. So the back, of course, has our fossil. They kind of have a top and a bottom section. So it's looked like they do multiple things. And I, if I remember correctly, you can kind of split these up between your three different dinosaurs as you, as you see fit. So you might have one run, you might have one attack, or one just do all of it. And of course, a very simple cardboard insert, but at least they had fun and added the logo. It seemed everything came in an adequate amount of Ziploc bags, which is always nice, because it would appear this stuff would move around a lot in the box otherwise. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Not a huge game like we've had the past couple of weeks that take a lot longer to unbox, but just as fun to look at and see all the different artwork. And as I put this away, James, because you missed it, you'll actually get to see my new game mat that just came in this week. I got I ordered some custom game mats with my slogan on it for both streaming and taking pictures of. Two, three. Go find all the bags where I put them all. So what is a game that you you don't own yet? that's probably at the top of your list to pick up next. A game I'm probably going to look into getting soon, which I'm, I'd have to look at the details on if it's even shipped to backers because I didn't end up backing it but Frosthaven I think I th I'm debating if I want to pick it up myself I, I believe my game group one of them backed it so there's a high chance I'll get to play it with them but it's still one of those like sometimes you you like games so much you're like I still want my own copy So is there anything you're looking forward to getting soon or that you've backed or want to learn more about? Calico is your number one on list, but ordered it yesterday. Well, that is wonderful. Yeah, Calico, I actually had the pleasure of getting to play test back in 2019 when we were still going to game conventions. And then it hit Kickstarter like at the end of that of that year, and so since I got to meet the designers, I actually got to hang out with the designers because they were kind of they knew uh, the owners of the booth I was helping a lot with, so I got to get hang out and get to know them a little bit better. So I actually backed at the higher tier level, so I could end up getting the prototype copy on top of just a regular copy, like. There's like one of the signed prototypes for the fun of it, just so I could actually support them a little bit more. And then the same thing with Cascadia, which is from the, the same um, group of people. And so I ended up getting, I already have a prototype copy of that as well. But yeah, definitely Calico was, as, as soon as I played it, I, I knew it would be a hit. And like, it was just just the right amount of easy to learn and enjoyable 
to get into, but it had enough depth to it and strategy and different variable setups that you would never get tired of playing it. It's like one of those, like, okay, I just want to have a nice, relaxing evening playing. A few war games that you want to learn and play, uh, have been getting into for the history. Interesting. Uh, like, which ones? I don't know a lot of war game stuff. Um, then again, I've never been a big history buff. I'm assuming y'all heard that. That was a nice box fart. Yeah, I don't have anything against war games. I just don't know much about them. Um, so yeah, any specific ones? And I will show you the other options I have to... Oh yeah. Game map. Ordered these from Inked Gaming. They were came in and really impressed with the quality when when they arrived. I got one with the white background. I got another one with the black and white photo, kind of like you see around the border of of my video stuff right now. And then some for my bigger table. So you have soldier and postman uniforms pre-ordered. Ordered supplemental book with it to read more about history. Interesting. Okay, so now probably all these other ones are. So I got Spirit Island, which I've played once online. Everdell Perlbert uh, expansion. Karuba, which I've seen played, never played it myself. And then a Kickstarter, is, uh, Runica, and the Six Sided Spell Books. This is made to look like kind of like a spell book, so if I had it on its side, you wouldn't be able to see the name. But yeah, that was a Kickstarter that I don't know if it was just wasn't as popular. Not as many people know about it. It's from Foxtail Games. But yeah, I had someone on Instagram debate today be like, you're the only other one I know that has that game. I was like, well, looks like we need to bust it out and play it at some point. Uh, you have a couple of French Indian War games that just came in. Bloody Mohawk and Savage Wilderness. Interesting. I'd, I'll probably have to look those up. Um, just the names alone kind of seem completely different than kind of the standard hobby gaming that they're war games. You can definitely tell that they're that, that more threatening war vibe just based within the name of it. But yeah, if you want to see me open one of these, let me know. Uh, George Washington kicked off the Seven Years' War, aka the French-Indian War. Okay. Yeah, I'm I was always terrible at history, like, I don't know, it just wasn't my thing as much, I was always the the math and science guy, it's, and I went into engineering because of that, and history, I was like, yes, there's things we can learn from it, but I'm not great at learning it, <laughs> so, more power to you for a, being interested in it and digging into it on your own and learning about it because I'd have trouble. Like, I, I'd probably play it for the game, but I'm not sure I could dig into the history side of it. And I'm going to continue eating my dinner as we chat. James, I see you in a lot of different chats, of course, here on Twitch. It makes me a question, like, how many people do you follow? Because I'm sure there's plenty more people I don't know that stream. And how are you in so many, it seems, at once? Every time I turn around, you're in the chat. A uh, fun way to get me to more of a math and science guy. It just happened to, okay. I get it, yeah, as we grow, some of our interests definitely change. Fair enough, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. I definitely look young. Oh, 
what, 15-ish? Are you, are you saying you only follow about 15 people? There's no way I'm already following way more than you. <laughs> Maybe it's just because they're like the top ones I constantly jump into their chats. But yeah, it seems I'm always seeing you in the chats. So just out of curiosity, how old do you think I am? Because I, I know I tend to look younger. It doesn't help that I've grown out my hair too. <laughs> Well, that's that's for sure. You definitely follow quality people. Like the people I've seen you follow and in their chats is okay. I was like, there's no way it's only fifteen. At least at least thirty sounds more reasonable for how often I see you in so many different chats. But yeah, because I I feel like I'm following thirty to fifty. Like there's a list I think. Uh, more games please uh, Ross made a list at some point of like all the different streamers I just I was like no I'm going to follow all of them just to be nice and support them and, and then it started being like I get a notification multiple times an hour someone's live someone's live <laughs> so it's like do I unfollow no I'm okay with notifications I want to see who's on and see who I can support when I have free time Do you want me to open one of these for? Oh, my. Okay, the age guess. So, you only follow 15. 30 to 32 is your age guess. You are so much better at guessing ages than most people are. I am 31. This summer I'll be 32. But most people have always assumed I'm younger. Especially if I was to shave such a baby face. But yeah, I like I feel like my follower list is like I sit there and like do the expand, expand, expand and scroll and scroll and scroll just to see everyone who's there. But yeah, I you got my age spot on. And probably when I get older, at some point I'll get more interested <laughs> in the history stuff, but. For now, I'll enjoy it while I can, because I won't be young and spry for long, as some people like to say. <laughs> like, my dad will make fun about my hair, because it's long and flowy, and he has bald spots. He, every time he sees me, he's like, kind of like, one day, you'll look like me. <laughs> Runica unboxing would be cool. Well, let's go for it then. So this was actually a Kickstarter and actually came with something extra taped to the back of the box. Not interested in history until about 38. Fair enough. So this is stickers. And this says it's a certificate of merit for, I wonder if that's an additional Kickstarter exclusive card or if they well, I'll have to look up if that was a print issue that they replaced. This is from Foxtail Games. It says it's for ages 14 and up, 1 to 4 players, in about 60 to 90 minutes. First off, right on the top, we got punch boards. That may just be one. That is a very thick punch board. I feel like that is thicker than my game mat. So if you like thick chits, 
You have two copies of Karuba for playing with up to eight people at a time. Oh, nice. So it, I've, I've done that with a few games where I buy an extra copy just to expand the player count. For a while, I had two copies of Carcassonne. So we could either go big map or we could have extra players. So let's see how well this punches with this thick board. Okay, that was a little tight. The tab sticks out a little bit. But I'm, oh, you got one one catcher. And a bit of no terrors, so that's nice. Let's see if I can do it quick. Yeah, so several went to catch, so and this is pressure straight down in the middle of you like thick chits cannot lie uh, what were we talking about streaming last night with Chris uh, the charity board gamer we were talking about something and we started making that the same joke like from this uh using the song but it was like i like something or other <laughs> and we started kind of singing mate and we were like okay we need to remake this song as a board game song and i, I like the reference of a like thick chits <laughs> that, that would work really well <laughs> okay so we got a rule book very vibrant art so kind of nice setup page gives you a story with components which is always helpful when verifying what you're looking for in a game talks about rounds player turns resolving dice uh, pushing which looks like you can move the dice around uh, and kind of some of the different rules. It looks like it's really well laid out with good picture examples. It talks about an expansion, rule variations, a uh, single player. It looks like it has a campaign, which is nice instead of just a, a beat your own score. And then you have your index of different terms and of course the credits which is having an index is always helpful when you're specifically looking for something in a real book i do like that they did that Let's see what we got here Oops, don't go that way okay so it says it's a guide to your first game and it looks like it's a essentially like a comic book style with the artwork so instead of just reading rules, you're reading a comic to learn how to play, which I have not seen. I'm not sure I've seen it before. I'm not sure if many games actually do this. So that's really cool how they've done that. definitely have to read through that even if it's not playing just to read that would be kind of fun okay looks like we got uh, are these player boards yeah it looks like we got player boards that actually are two layered that's a that's another piece of very thick board but then you have two pieces of that here in the middle where the circle is One, two, three, four of those, which appears to have different artwork in the upper corner. Looks like with the artwork around it, they've done some kind of flavor text type stuff for the fun of it. Okay. And we got some rings cardboard rings i guess they go around here i think they actually 
during the game play. Somehow they twist around, do different things. I'd have to look through the rules and learn it before I know for sure. But that's really interesting. Okay, tiny Ziploc for one wooden piece. Possibly the first player token. It looks like a cat with wings. Kind of like the box art itself, yeah. So that piece is the same as that right there. Can definitely get rid of that silica gel pack. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> Appears you fall closer to 25. Well, I, I, I don't really want to see it as a competition of him to be right or wrong. It was just, I feel I've seen you so many places. I was like, how would it only be 15? Maybe, maybe you watched or rated with people into other ones and kept talking and didn't realize if you were following or not. Okay, so we got player aids, like turn summary, front and back. Shows you what's on each dice because it says special colored dice, all six sides on those dice. So it's always nice to know what's on the dice. Um, what are these cards? These are really interesting artwork styles on these cards, I think. So it looks like these are professor cards, which I don't know how these get used, but very vibrant, very detailed art, double sided. Looks like they have different tasks or layouts of the dice that you're trying to accomplish from what I can guess so far. Yeah, raid trains, especially during TLN weekends. Like, I, I just I just leave it streaming. Oh, and there's a lot of meeples again. I agree. It's ever, James is everywhere. Yeah, glad to see the community growing more than... Yeah, it's... It's been great to see how how well everyone supports each other here on Twitch, and like, and I decided I wanted to start streaming too, a because I've enjoyed my time with the charity board gamer, but it's also been just kind of because I love playing games so much and I love spreading my joy of gaming with everyone else, especially pandemic times. It's like this was the easy easy way to do it, and. been here lurking well i'm glad you've been lurking and if ever you want to lurk and want to command the lurk i do have a lurk command because i i appreciate everyone who shows up and lurks and chats and does everything so as a show of appreciation i've set up my lurk it's one of the things i can do even without all the other channel points i can have a little Thanks for y'all. But yeah, ho hopefully once I hit the next level of a streamer, or is it the... I don't even know what they call it. Once, Basically, once I have 50 followers, I can actually go to the next level, and y'all can get channel points. Because I don't care about the subscriber part. which like It's nice and it's a perk, but I want the perk for y'all to have channel points, because I can set up different things y'all can redeem for being here to show appreciation. Looks like we got all these little cards. Um, they're called Certificate of Merit. Looks like they have numbers and points on them. So I guess you can earn points depending on what you do. I'd have to verify the rules. Affiliate. Okay. Yeah, so once I hit affiliate, then I can start doing channel points and whatnot. Which I think I'm maybe 12, like a dozen away from. I'm, I'm close. It looks like these cards show layouts of the dice and kind of different things you're doing as you're playing this game. Like I said, different colored dice. Yeah, but these are definitely small cards, especially considering they did these tarot size cards with those. So you got itty bitty cards and you got tarot cards. So definitely unique. Uh, we got four, uh, these are definitely 
well, same backs as these, except the corners are a different color. Each one a different color. So I, I kind of wonder if these are, you get one of these randomly at the beginning of the game. We'll see. I'll have to look at the rules. Now, the fun part, the dice. Oh, wait, there's a dice bag. Yeah. <laughs> Give me 12 more followers, however we can do it. Polls for unboxing, exactly. Like, I could probably set up a poll through um, Streamlabs or a different thing, but yeah, just having all the different perks that the affiliate level has. So this is a nice, simple bag. It does have a screen print on it. And then our dice. Yeah, pretty dice. And these are tiny dice, kind of the size of the dice you find in Sagrada. But these are custom, and uh, they're actually engraved. They're not just printed on. So all these sides have custom uh, symbols. And that, I believe, depending on the color, the distribution is different. But yeah, just the colors of the dice, the way the light hits these dice is, they are very pretty dice. That luminescent style that even Sagrada does. Yeah, Sagrada has one of my favorite sets of dice in a, in a current game. Just the quality, the colors, and like, of course, because I'd like to take pictures of, of games and dice, I was able to basically create a, a dice wall with the Sagrada dice and do it, and have it like backlit and everything. Probably one of my favorite pictures I've posted. And then we can't forget the last color. Kind of an orangish red, not not true red, not not quite a true dark orange. But yeah, definitely very nice looking game. Yeah, I think these are just yeah, this is just a sticker sheet, just for the fun of it. Uh, yeah, so do you have any questions about what I just opened? I know I kind of opened it fast. I didn't zoom everything. But let me know if you want to see something closer up. I'll show it. I probably have a few more minutes before I need to wrap up and get ready for other stuff I got going on tonight. Yes. Sagrada, I think, was one of my earliest Kickstarter games that... And so, even though I've found other games that I probably would play more often or enjoy slightly more, the quality of it and the experience from one of the first Kickstarters I did was, it's one that's going to stay probably on my shelf for a long time. Like, I, I won't say no to playing it. Yeah. Oh, yes. The insert. Uh, it's plastic. Um, looks like it has some custom stuff the way they did the molding, uh, kind of that star uh, from most of the game. Looks like it has places for different types of cards, the first player token, different cards, and it looks like all the coins can actually fit in the insert right here. So what I'll probably end up doing is putting it all back together later and doing my shake test. Curious about Sagrada Legacy. That has me curious because I have not heard about that yet. But yeah, I like to do a shake test with games where I put it back in the box with basically what they provided, shake it, turn it, whatever, and hopefully pieces stay in place. Otherwise, be like, okay, you're going to need a Ziploc or whatever else you might need to add to the box. So we'll see how well this shake test fares. Which I guess I can do it right now. Jurassic Park, we didn't do their shake test yet. 
So you saw me put it all back. So a full shape. It might fall off the shelf. It, you might throw it into the car trunk or something or other. Let's see how well this does. Had enough bags. It looks like some of the cards slipped the next section. But beyond that, good enough insert to hold what you need in place. I don't see any issues major with that. Mm -hmm. And of course, the wonderful box fart. And it's Drunk Physics. Hello, hello. How are you today? Game any good? Um, I assume you're asking about Runica, which we just opened up. Uh, so, yep, Sagrada Legacy is a thing they they leaked, shared no details. I said more details soon, but it's been four months or so. That's probably why, because if there's more details, it'd definitely be shared around. Uh, yeah, Drunk Physics, we um, opened on stream today Jurassic Park Danger Adventure Strategy Game, and also Runika and the Six Sided Spellbooks. Uh, so yeah, fr Friday nights we just hang out, chat, and unbox some games as we have time. Which, I hate to do this because you just showed up, but I'm actually needing to wrap up my stream to take care of a few things. But, you're in time to help me raid someone with a few ex with the extra viewer at minimum. Any suggestions on who y'all want me to raid? I can go... Try to see who's on, but if there's someone specific you feel could use the love, let me know in chat. Because you know that's what we like to do here on Board Game Twitch. Share the love. Let's see, who do I see? I see Board Game House. Uh, they might be playing a video game, though. Because there's season three, episode 72, Sea of Legends. Tailwagon. Are they on right? Oh, yep, they are. Yeah, for sure. We can raid them. Okay, so we'll get ready to raid. And yeah, I, th I think they joined me possibly last Friday. It was in the past week or two that they joined and chatted. So, de and I told them I'd definitely try to catch their stream when I could when we weren't both stream but yeah it'll be great to raise in them so that's what we'll do let's see if I do this right there we go read at not caps lock we do have to get the caps compilation correctly or it doesn't like it to the wagon games there we go okay yeah, so I'm going to, we're going to raid. So I appreciate y'all showing up, hanging out tonight, chatting. It's been a joy having y'all in here. Uh, and hopefully I will see y'all next Monday where, where I'll choose a game to play. Maybe I'll try to figure out how to play possibly this game since it does have a one player set up. Um, but yeah, thank you. I hope y'all have a wonderful weekend. And as always, play games and spread joy.